Hello, everybody. hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. Let's hop into our first story today. Kind of in breaking news happening last night, we do have a torqued roster change. Now, if I would have told you guys a couple days ago we're going to have a torqued roster change, it probably would have been the last player you would have guessed to leave, and apparently it was going to be Swag. He's leaving that roster permanently, or at least for the time being, to go participate in full-time streaming. Now, no one knows exactly what full-time streaming is going to mean, but probably going to be streaming more frequently, as well as playing face-it and rank S matches and trying to, of course, pug his way back to the top. It seems, based on his post, I'll link down below he was actually a bit overwhelmed by being forced to go to LAN events or online qualifiers or play whatever you know he didn't want to be playing and so I, I guess you could say there's a couple sides to the argument out there and a bit of controversy people are a bit upset by this and understandably so the first of which you can understand he's maybe more of a chill relaxed player he doesn't want to be forced to play he only wants to play when he wants to play and maybe likes to play in a bit of a home atmosphere and of course on stream he could also make a good amount of money doing that as opposed to uh, you know playing with Torque who did not make EPL they only have a couple big tournaments coming up but still Still, of all the Mountain Dew League teams out there, Torqued is financially probably one of the better ones for him, especially to get better because they are going to a LAN event known as ESL Belo Horizonte, possibly future LAN events as well. You know, the DreamHack Tour is constantly going on and other events he's still going to participate in. So it can definitely be uh, argued both sides as to what he's going to be doing. Of course, he can make money streaming. He can have a fun time streaming. But can he get as good as he's going to get if he were to play with Torqued at LAN events and so on and so forth? There's definitely two sides of the argument. So whichever one you guys want to take, I I'm certainly uh, willing to hear those in the comment section down below. My biggest worry as well though is of course the progression we saw of Torqued over the past year when they first started out with Days, and of course that roster kind of subtly fell apart you know their struggles throughout Mountain Dew League and then of course we have Steel take command and the team kind of bounced back. They make it to the Mountain Dew League finals almost qualify for EPL and of course they've also qualified for ESL Belo Horizonte that is less than three weeks away. It's going to be a tournament down in Brazil for $200,000. Only eight teams are going to be there and Torqued certainly had a chance to maybe maybe actually break the top half there. Again, a lot of the teams there are actually some very, very good teams. I know FaZe Clan, SK Gaming is going to be there. Other very top teams. So it would have been difficult, but still a great tournament to participate in. And going forward, Torqued will no longer have a fifth member. As of right now, no announcement as to who's going to replace Swag. And how do you replace a guy like that on a team as well? So a bit, it's a bit disappointing, but again, you have to understand from his point of view, what he wants to do is probably most important. So Torque's roster has officially changed. And unfortunately enough, it's three weeks short of ESL Belo Horizonte. Now again, the decision is not too brash, not too concerning besides that tournament because if the team does participate in Mountain Dew League next season, which they most likely will, next season of Mountain Dew League does not actually give the winner an EPL spot. If you guys have been following Mountain Dew League the past two to three years, the winner of that league actually gets a spot in EPL or ESL Pro League. This year, that's not the case. So if the winner of next season of Mountain Dew League will not actually get an EPL spot, so even if Torque does compete, there's really no total overall big prize to actually try, when sh try and achieve. It's going to be more of a training season. But nonetheless, it's still a huge loss for Torque and we'll see who actually replaces Swag sometime soon in the future. And also in big news with the French Shuffle underway, HLTV is now reported negotiations going on for G2. We can almost assume right now and almost guarantee the new G2 roster has already been confirmed. Of course, that trio will be signed if negotiations do go through of Shocks, Existence, and Smiths. They'll be joined by their number one pick, Kenny S, which does make sense. A couple days ago, one of you guys sent me a screenshot of we actually had Smiths joking around about boot camping with Kenny S, so that does make sense and we all knew that was going to be their number one go-to pick. Alongside that, though, a bit of a surprise, but and again, not too big of one. We probably thought the fifth member would, was going to be a current G2 member in terms of buyouts. They went out to buy out a brand new contract, and that will be their fifth member body, apparently, to join that roster. So we'll see if confirmations do go through, if negotiations are finalized, but apparently G2's new roster, they expected better roster, will again leave out Scream, and again, they kind of expected as well, MBK will be left out, him and Shocks butting heads in the past few months. It was expected they would not be playing together. So will Envious pick up Scream? Will they pick up MBK? We'll find out sometime soon, but also other changes out there. We have another Gambit Gaming change for the IGL. This time around, though, it will be Doja. And again, I, of course, had to show you guys the funny the funny meme circulating all around of Doja laughing and being caught laughing. Just a funny guy. He is now going to be their IGL. So we're going to see how Gambit Gaming makes a third or fourth IGL change now in the past year. We'll see if this one is actually the one to work out for them. And this next story has nothing to do with, uh, I guess you could say, CSGO, but generally in esports and gaming news out there, I do want to quickly talk about, of course, the increase in SWAT calls we saw over the past year and a half. This was, of course, the revelation of many YouTube videos out there, many people luckily surviving being swatted, and again, it's just a, a kind of a crazy instance that people out there hate people so much or, or think it's funny enough to actually swat someone when it really puts their lives in danger. This was actually around a year ago. We saw a 28-year-old man in Kansas be shot dead by a responding police officer who was responding to a swatted call, apparently uh, reported by three members in the gaming community, the first of which who actually made the call. His name was Tyler Barris. He'll be going to prison as well. Uh, all of these kids right now are currently in court.
court and under, undergoing sentencing and will be going away for a long, long time. So Tyler, who made the call, will be going to jail along with two friends he met online who egged him on to make the call. Their names, I'll, I'll keep quiet for now. One of them is actually, I'll keep quiet, their last names. Their names are Shane and Casey. And apparently it was actually Shane who gave uh, Tyler the former address of his own home. Now he no longer lived there, but he gave him, he gave Tyler the actual address to SWAT. And apparently that was his former address. That was Shane's former address. And unfortunately the 28 year old man who lived there was shot dead by the responding police officer. So obviously an absolutely terrible story. All three of these kids will be sentenced. Uh, two of them for actually provoking the call. One of them for actually making the call itself. And they will be sentenced for a long, long time. It's expected as of right now, 10 to 15 years for each and every one of them. So just a shocking story out there and a reminder for all of you guys. It, it can be, it can be funny to some extent online to make some jokes, but when it comes to swatting, there is no joke involved. That is an absolutely serious thing to do. And very lastly, in lighter news, sorry about that. I just want to, I just want to kind of branch out sometimes in esports news, kind of want to touch on some other stories that are big in the scene, but also very lastly, guys, and big announcements from Blast Pro Series. They are surely but shortly actually naming their invite list, and apparently last night they also announced apparently a brand new international team coming sometime soon. The roster, a brand new international roster will be announced very shortly here, so expect that, guys. A lot of big rumors out there. What's going on? Will Simple leave Na'Vi? Will there be a, will, will this be all about the new French roster? Will it be about the G2 roster or the Envious roster? It does say that each player will be announced individually, so expect very, very shortly. And again, we don't see organizers doing this very often, guys. We, we've had ESL Pro League deadlines where ESL Pro League on their site, they're forced to post the actual rosters, but this has really never happened before where Blast Pro Series, of all people out there, will be announcing a brand new international roster. Who knows if that team's going to beat them to the post and actually post themselves, but keep your fingers crossed, guys. We have no idea who it's going to be. And again, just keep in mind, international roster means all it has to be is just two players of different country descent. So it could be, in fact, it could be Scream. He's from Belgium and MBK. He's from France. So that would be an international roster. But still, very well expected. It's going to be a really cool roster to see. And it's going to be cool to see who exactly it actually is. Now, very lastly, in today's episode of CSGO News, I'm going to be quickly taking a break tomorrow. I'm actually finalizing a potential, potentially an esports job out there. I have an interview today, um, a very, very nerve wracking interview. So I'll be taking a day off tomorrow to kind of finalize plans. And I'll see you guys all back here Saturday or Sunday with more CSGO News. But very lastly, as well, and some great news out there by the end of this week, or by the end of, I think it may be, maybe next week, based off the post itself, HLTV has reported that Fierce Tigers and Vici Gaming have been forced to replay the final, the grand final match for the minor qualifier. That means the winner will be going to the face at minor. And this is actually in big news. If you guys watched my video yesterday or a couple days ago, you know about the malicious intent or possibly the suspicious intent by Fierce Tigers and how they actually made their way through the minor qualifier was, was quite shocking. But apparently the grand final will have to be replayed, I believe by a week from today or the, the, weird, the posting was weird because of course today is already Thursday. It said by the end of the week. Um, so I'm not really sure if they only gave these guys 24 hours to replay the match. So I need to probably go back and do a little more research. But either way, there's been a deadline set that Fierce Tigers has to abide by apparently. And also they responded as well saying that's not fair. They shouldn't have to hold up to the responsibilities of the other team just because Vici Gaming couldn't make it on time. That's not their mistake, which I, you could argue is definitely a fair point to make. And on top of that as well, Fierce Tigers saying that all of their players are subsequently on vacation. So they, of course, that could mean they might not be able to make it out to the game itself. How ironic would it be that Fierce Tigers is, is forced to replay the game and then they're the ones who have to forfeit because they can't actually make it into the server on time. That is incredibly ironic. I, I cannot wait to see if the match is actually replayed. And I'm guessing all of you guys will probably be cheering for Vici Gaming maybe? I, I, I assume most of the community is probably going to be cheering for them by this point in time. But again, we have no further information about you know Fierce Tigers, that whole allegation right now, what's going on. Apparently their fifth member actually is Supreme, so that that rumor did come out. It's no longer TB Girl, it's actually Supreme. So he has a bunch of history out there about um, some things going through it and not his way, match fixing, possibly cheating. Either way though, the, the match should be replayed. Who are you guys going to be cheering for? I, I'd love to hear you guys' opinion. As always, I hope you guys are on today's episode of CSGO News. My name is Jake like you. I will see you all in a couple days and uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great weekend.